I've been interested in spinal cord injury for almost 40 years. I began my studies in the late 1970s and early 1980s. I had discovered certain places in the developing brain and spinal cord that I thought might be sort of like guardrails or barriers. They had funny shapes outside the cell, call them holes. Nerves would get very close, but never cross or grow into those areas. Nobody believed that such barrier regions even existed. I was convinced that the nerves would see or recognize somehow and then turn away or get stuck. One of the problems in studying something that no one believes is true, it's hard to get funding. In 1983, we had a very tragic accident. My husband was killed and my daughter became a, a paraplegic. My mother and I met Jerry Silver back in the 1980s. The research being done to help people to regain function post-injury was all focused on electrical stimulation, implants into the muscles. There was a big computer box. I never felt good about having more stuff put into my body. Jerry Silver was the only presenter focused on finding a biological solution. We knew that that was where we wanted to put the Brummage and Nelson Foundation. We always knew there was progress because Jerry would update us. It kept me focused on making sure that my body will be ready. I've been really diligent about my standing exercise, my stretching exercise. They could develop a peptide, which is a small stretch of amino acids that could be injected under the skin and cross the blood-brain barrier, get into the brain, and block the receptor. He encouraged us to apply to TA, the Council to Advance Human Health, to help do a bunch of make-or-break experiments to move forward to people. We founded the Accelerator Fund, where we said, we're gonna find some hot technologies to invest us in, trust us a little bit. CAW catapulted our work towards translation. I mentor the preclinical programs. Industry is much more direct in telling me what they need to see in programs. Using our systemic treatment approach in combination in our chronic model of spinal cord injury, I was able to see remarkable recovery. This is unprecedented. Just over five years ago, in March of 2016, my daughter-in-law, Cody, fell and broke her back and became a paraplegic. She and my son, Ian, have three children. I wasn't sleeping very well in the weeks after the accident. I Googled spinal cord injury. I talked to people all over the world. It was very discouraging because I just couldn't find anything that was close enough to translation. I got a call from Harold Punnett. I also have been part of an angel investment group out of Vancouver that specializes in creating startups and funding them. Jerry and Brad and I spent an awful lot of time. I asked them thousands of questions. I had to understand more about the technology. I had to understand what the competitive landscape was. It is very typical in a pharmaceutical industry to take 10 years from discovery to man studies. Jerry and the, the team have done that in seven years. The molecule that came out of Dr. Silver's lab is essentially the molecule that we're taking forward. And it's unusual for an academic lab to create a molecule that goes directly into the clinic. Typically, you expect that the company that takes that has to do some chemistry on the molecule to try and make it have druggable characteristics. That process can take anywhere from a year to five years. We've injected our first humans for the phase one volunteer, healthy volunteer study. We hope to get into phase two by next year. We are going to focus on spinal cord injury, multiple sclerosis, and Alzheimer's disease. As we go into patients in 2022, is to start clinical trials in each of those indications. What was important is that we use our discoveries to help people. We are so, so grateful. Now, like that hope, is being realized.